Katie, you keep your eye to the sky, scouring the internet and looking for all things pretty. And what do you have for us this month in terms of space weather and, and beautiful images? Yeah, so we've had some beautiful images throughout this past year that I'm going to show some of my favorites. This first one is five images of five different stars taken by Griffith Observatory Telescope demonstrator Anthony Perkick. So we see Betelgeuse, Sirius, Antares, Procyon, and Arcturus in this image. And then from another telescope demonstrator, Todd Kunioka, this is Jupiter and Saturn behind Face Rock from Joshua Tree National Park. This was taken in August. And then a stunning image by Blake Estes. This was in September. This is Sharpless One in Comet 2017 K2 Pan Stars. And then we have the moon with Venus. This was taken by Jordi Coy. And of course, JWST is beautiful image of Jupiter. I had to keep in here. And then just some beautiful pictures of the city and the observatory. This one was taken by a museum guide, Jared Dockersley. And David Pinsky, who also gives us beautiful images, took this of downtown LA with uh, Mount Baldy in the background. And then to move on to some of my favorite cloud pictures, this is the sunset in Santa Cruz. This is a little gif that's looping. Um, this was taken by one of our producers, Daniel Perea. And these are my favorite clouds. These are lenticulars. This is by Dario Gianoble. And another Anthony Perkic image. This was above Griffith Observatory. And you can see that halo there with the bird flying through. That was just a beautiful image. And then I showed this gigantic jet a few times this past year. This was one of my favorite finds. And what's cool about this jet is five months after it was taken, this green ghost that you see in the middle of the image here was sighted. And that was for the first time ever. Um, this is from Space Weather that that green ghost had been sighted. So that was something really cool from this past year. We also had a lot of noctilucent clouds. This is a June reading here from Space Weather. And we were able to find some beautiful images of those noctilucent clouds. This is Dr. Adrian Janetta. And this is from the UK. And then the stunning image also has Aurora in it from uh, Jared Eicher. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. And then, of course, I had to include this image. This is actually Noctilucent Clouds on Mars. This is from Curiosity. And then on to some space weather. So this, um, this is a, a plasma twister. I, I can't recall what, oh, this was June 21st of this year, um, which is our tornado 20,000 kilometers tall twirling hot plasmas that uh, it says here. So that was something really cool to see this year. And then this was the largest sunspot as of May of this year. This one was 123,000 kilometers across, I believe. This was sunspot AR3014. And just to give you a little visual of the distance there, you can see the Earth and Moon and how big that, that is right in the center below the sun. And then finally, this is today. This is sunspot AR3153, and it's rotating um, in the sun's southeastern limb. Um, and it's a huge uh, sunspot that we're seeing today. So two dark cores that are wider than Earth. And then just to take a look at the solar cycle, we this is the sunspot count for each year. And we are headed towards solar maximum. So you can see 2022, we've had only one day of no sunspots this year. And some of my favorite uh, Aurora photos from this year, this was Evan Zucker, who I believe went to Alberta to see these. And this one's Jaron Strawn, who always takes incredible images of Aurora. I believe he's in Sweden. And this one I love because it's from the Upper Peninsula in Michigan um, with the bridge there. You can see uh, Aurora right above it. This is by Mary Beth Kazensky. 
And then finally, a more recent image. This is from November of this year. And this is from Oliver Schwen, who also takes incredible images of Aurora and other things as well. So I just want to say a big thank you to everyone that allows us to use their photos and, and show them during all space, because it's a pleasure to be able to show them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> agree more. I do think you probably should say, though, that when you say green ghost, you should make it clear that's a nickname. <laughs> that it's not an unusual <laughs> atmospheric <laughs> phenomenon, rather than getting us into the National Enquirer. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Well, atmospheric phenomenon. <laughs> Bad Boy has strong feelings about the green ghost. So just uh, we'll be interviewing <laughs> Bad Boy in next month's presentation. Um, well, thank you, Katie, so much for uh, that space weather. The, those Aurora photographs make me want to become an Aurora chaser, uh, the videos and photos. I've only seen them once before and they were spectacular, although nothing close to what we're seeing here. And it's just crazy. Now what's neat is the Aurora are actually tied to the solar cycle and the more active the sun is, um, the more likely you are to have the conditions right to get the Aurora. So, but certain times of year, a little better than others. So if you really wanna go see them, plan, plan it out, uh, do your research and uh, don't just say, I'm heading north, I'm gonna go see an Aurora. You, you might not have that much luck. 